Hello and welcome back to The Doctor's Garage here on YouTube. So in this video today, I'm going to be talking about the potential of swapping my Defender 90 TD5 for a brand new Ineos Grenadier. anyone that loves Defenders, you will have been keeping a keen eye on the development of the Ineos Grenadier, the new 4x4 that's promised to be a remake of the old Land Rover Defender and really to take the market from what was lost when Land Rover made the new Defender 110 and the new Defender 90, which to be honest have a lot more similarities to something like the Discovery and the Range Rover series of cars. Now I've had my interest registered in this car since it was first mentioned online and I've been watching the series of videos of the development, how it was designed and all the features of this new car and this week I think it was about three days ago there was a live event on YouTube where they talked all about the launching of this car which is meant to be now July 2022 to the UK market the pricings the specs in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about what I think of the car how it compares to the old Defender and also about the pricing and specs and configurations that you we know so far you can do with this new car now as much as I love the new Defenders at the moment particularly the price of them is so high you'll basically paying the same price as you would for a fully loaded Discovery 5 or even a Range Rover. You're talking about 60 to 90 to 100,000 pounds some of the cars that Land Rover are producing. And although Defenders are very nice, they are quite sparse in what they offer in comparison to some of the alternatives like the Discovery. So let's talk a little bit more about the Grenadier in detail. Let's talk about the interior, the exterior, how it compares, and also the pricing and the configurations that we know you can do with this car after the live event that Ineos did the other night. Now it's pretty much out there exactly what this car looks like from the exterior. There's been test centers offering drives. You can see online videos of it now and all the imagery is available of exactly what this car looks like in real life. If we start with the front of the car, I think there's definitely an element of Defender there. You can certainly see it's a Defender from the lights, the square angles of the front, and even the bonnet and everything are very similar to what would be expected actually with something like a TD5 Defender with no hump in the middle. From the front, the grills are slightly different to Defender, and I think there's definitely an element of something like an old G-Wagon, actually, about the front. They're very, very similar in that look. From the side, you're pretty much looking at a 110, an old Defender 110. I don't think there's any difference, really. You've got the Alpine lights, you've got the rear windows. It looks almost identical. I think the wheelbase is slightly shorter though so this is meant to be more comparable to something like a g-wagon rather than the old uh, 110s which are slightly longer but i have heard i think they're going to produce a bigger seated version very very soon so a longer wheelbase from the rear this car looks quite unique actually there's not that much defender-esque about the rear obviously the silhouette is still the same it's quite squared off but things like the rear light units are very different so these are like round cluster light units much like what you might get on something like a Corvette, actually, rather than a 4x4. Um, but they look quite good, I think. Overall, I think the aesthetic from the back is quite nice. Interestingly, they've gone for a split rear door. So you can open this smaller door on the left, and I think there's storage behind that. You can also open the main door, the big swing arm door, on the right. So moving on inside the new Ineos Grenadier, it looks pretty good. You know, I think the whole aesthetic inside the car is quite nice. There are Recaro seats that are standard in the cars. And actually the dashboard and the features are really well thought out and quite well put together. If you haven't already, I would recommend watching the videos that Ineos put out in the lead up to this launch because they're really useful to understand a bit more about the design and why it's been designed the way it's been designed. So there's the main dashboard in the center between the two seats at the front. And on that, you have all your general driving controls like you might expect. You've got a great um, infotainment unit that looks quite nice and again nice steering wheel setup and your dials a lot of it is analog focused and they wanted to do that when you hear about the design to ensure that it lasted a long time and it was actually something that was reliable and that's something we've seen in newer Land Rovers, for example. It hasn't been so great. In my Discovery 5, for example, there's always electrical technical glitches when I'm driving my car. One of the good features they've done is they've put all the off-road control units in the roof. It actually looks like an aircraft cockpit with that kind of design. And that's all the off-road control. So when you're not used, not off-road and you're not driving in anywhere that needs it, you don't have to touch those controls. I think Land Rover sometimes, especially with like, let's say the Discovery 5, because that's the car I own, with that, you find that actually those controls you'd hardly be using. That car doesn't go off-road that much. It's mainly spent on the road. And actually, you don't need to change to loose gravel settings when you're just on the road. And it sometimes gets in the way, actually, with having all those controls down there. So it's quite nice to split that and have it separated. 
The other thing I've done, which is quite interesting, is there's two sunroofs. There's two panels of glass in the roof opposed to the one that you might find in, in another 4x4 manufacturer, which is quite interesting. I think it looks quite unique and quite different. So looking into the back of this car in the second row in the five seat version, it's pretty spacious. The seats look quite good from what I can see. I haven't seen anyone sit in the back for how big it truly is, but it does seem quite a comfortable car in the back. Again, it's pretty basic, but probably what you would expect with the utilitarian design of this car. Pretty much one of the most common asked questions on the live at a new YouTube was how much is it going to cost because that's the question in everyone's head since Ineos Grenadier have started to make this journey into this market they've always focused on the fact that luxury 4x4s are too much money for people that want to use them for things that are weekends for getting them muddy for getting them dirty there's a lot of features in the new Grenadier that make it really useful for that kind of lifestyle and actually the old Defender suited that perfectly it's exactly what people wanted and to be honest the success of the original Defender was because it was a great price and it did exactly what people need to do without any of the fancy features that the newer cars had so the price of the Ineos Grenadier if you just want the commercial versions the two seats in the front and nothing in the back so much like the van back version rather than the station wagon of the old Defender you're starting at £48,000 including VAT they do say that comes quite well spec although that's not to be seen at the moment there's no information about that but I believe it's things like heated seats and air conditioning and things like that so like the excess spec of the old Defender However, £48,000 is quite a lot of money for a commercial van back vehicle. People probably will want to go into the station wagon to have the seats in the back so it becomes a five-seater. And there's no clear price on exactly what that is from Ineos at the moment. In the interview they did on YouTube Live and some of the information I read online, I think it's about six to eight thousand pound more on top of that base price of 48. So you're probably looking around the fifty-five thousand pound mark for a car that's five-seated with probably the spec you would want in a car but remember this is still a utilitarian vehicle it's not going to be as plush as a lot of the new 4x4s are so i know one of the biggest feedbacks i've had from people and seen what people have said online is that well that's a lot of money fifty-five thousand pound for a car that is meant to be used as a bit of a workhorse really you are stepping into the territory of things like the new land rover defender and originally ineos's message was we're going to produce a car that everyone can buy people who don't mind getting dirty and are using it as a workhorse on farms and agriculturally and actually at fifty-five thousand pound you could buy a defender s and the defender s starts at fifty-nine thousand. if that's a heritage you want and you like land rovers for for whatever reason in regards of their reliability then actually it might be a good choice to have a defender rather than a grenadier you are going to find that the spec levels in the defender are quite low at that level you don't get a lot of the things that you would expect probably not what you'd get in the grenadier i think the new ineos grenadier is really well thought out i think it has a lot of really interesting design features i think it addresses a lot of the issues that the old defender has and brings it into the modern age and i think if you are looking for a car like that i think it's a brilliant car However, I do think it is a little bit on the pricey side. But then when you look at the design and the things that have gone into it and the manufacturing process and the fact this is the first car Ineos have ever produced, you can understand why it costs as much as it does. That still, however, doesn't mean people are going to buy it over a Defender, but I think it definitely offers a more well thought out 4x4 from some of the practicality elements that you might find in the in the cabin and the way it performs off-road as well from what I've seen and what I've heard. But Ineos are in their first phase of ordering. As one of their first registered customers, I've been offered to put a deposit down on a vehicle. It's £450. I believe that's refundable for what I'm told, but I'm yet to clarify exactly what that means. I think there'll be a lot more information released about the spec and things about what this car's all about, but I'd be really, really interested to hear what you guys watching this think. Do you like the new Ineos Grenadier? Is it something you thought about buying and actually does the price change things is that what you expected is that a bit more than you expected so let me know in the comments below what you guys think at home For another news before you go today i have another problem my defender 90 is broken it does not start i haven't run it for about two weeks because i didn't want to use a diesel in it because i couldn't get diesel from anywhere here in the uk because everyone went a bit crazy buying diesel and petrol for whatever reason and so now i turn the key the engine turns over, but it doesn't fire, it doesn't start. I have no idea what's wrong with it. Nothing has changed, nothing's happened to it. I've been led to believe by a few people I've spoken to, it could be the fuel pump that's not working correctly because I don't hear any kind of buzzing or whirring when I start the engine. So what could be the problem? I'll show you now what happens when I turn the key. So just gonna put the keys in here. Ignition comes on, absolute silence, and then turn the engine. 
and nothing. I think I'm going to do a bit of a work up myself to see if the fuel pump is working. I'm going to take the few fuel hose off where it goes into the engine and see if it is actually putting fuel out. I can't hear anything. Someone said to bang it with a mallet on the fuel tank to try and wake up the pump. Apparently that works. It hasn't for mine. The other thing is to check if electric is going to the pump. I don't see why it wouldn't be, but I'll check that first. Next step, which will probably end up making the next video, to be fair, will be me probably trying to change my fuel pump in my Defender. Any tips on that? If that's what you think the problem is, just from this very short video, please let me know in the comments below. And I might see you next time when I'm under this car trying to drop the fuel tank out of it and change the pump. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel. Give me a like and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video.